Hello and good afternoon, everyone. I am Lyndon Wilson, your host of The Difference. Uh, I'm going to be joined today by my co-host, Leah Christ. But before we get started, um, have you ever wondered what it takes to make the difference? I mean, what it really takes to make the difference in our lives, in our communities, in our businesses, careers, even in our industries. Um, what, what does it take to go from good to great, from acceptable to exceptional? Well, today I'm going to be talking to three ladies, um, first of who is Leah, my co-host. Hello, Leah. How are you doing today? I'm good, Lyndon. Thank you for having me on. Well, thank you for being here and thank you for inviting your friends. Um, before we bring them in, go ahead and let's uh, let's let everybody know a little bit about who you are, who you work with, and uh, what is so super great about Achosa. Thank you so much. So I'm Leah Frey Kreisch, and I have been in the real estate industry for about 20 years now. And I was in, of course, sold real estate. And then I went into home warranty, uh, was in title for a little bit, and now back in home warranty. And so now I'm with Achosa Home Warranty as a partner and one of the owners of the company. And I'm just super excited to be here for the first time in my life. I'm just over the top joy to be able to bring a product like we have to the market center. We are in 11 states. We've been around for two years. Um, I did just open up Texas in December. There are seven of us in the state of Texas selling a Chosa product. And the cool thing about us, which makes us the difference is, is that you get to choose your own contractor. We pay retail rate to that contractor of your choice. And then we pay that contractor in the home when the job is complete. So that in itself is just huge. So um, thank you. Yes, we're super excited. And this is our name. It's kind of different. So I'll hold it up, but it's a Chosa Home Warranty. So very cool. Very Thank cool. So uh, that's awesome. Congratulations uh, on, on being an owner and partner as well. That's really good. So uh, let's bring in your friends now and let's talk, let you introduce them. And then I want them to tell everybody a little bit about themselves. Absolutely. So I'm so excited y'all are here today with us. And um, these awesome ladies cover Parker County, Wise County, Tarrant County, Johnson County, Hood County, they're licensed in the state of Texas, so they go everywhere. Um, but I'm so excited for you guys to hear from them. But uh, the first one up is Miss Tawana Greathouse. She is the Hi. business development director uh, with Excel Title Group. Um, it's a fee attorney office with Payne. I'm going to make sure I say this correctly. Uh, Detra LLC. Perfect. And then I have Miss <laughs> Lisa Elkins. She is the producing manager of United Country Real Estate in Fort Worth, Texas. So welcome, ladies. Hi, y'all. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Me. Well, thanks for being here and uh, taking your time. Um, so, Lisa, do you want to go first and tell everybody a little bit about yourself? And then we will let Tawana go next. Sure. Um, I started my career at the age of 18 as a leasing agent, and in 1996, I became a licensed realtor. Um, I come from a farm and ranch family, and so this is a perfect fit for me because this is what I love is the, the outside and the outdoors and kind of roaming around out in different areas. Um, we are a lifestyle company, and I sell lifestyle real estate, which is uh, basically we sell, I, I do farm and ranch, residential uh, hobby farms, uh, river and lake properties, uh, hunting and commercial. And we, and we do some other things as well too on, on the lifestyle side. Um, I'm able to work in or to connect with different agents, uh, in different areas because we are a national, an international company. Uh, we have offices in, uh, Australia, Mexico, Costa Rica, Panama, and the Honduras. So it's very exciting. Awesome. Do you ever get to visit any of those other offices? If I'm traveling, I do. Yes. <laughs> awesome. That, that's really cool. That's really yeah. cool. All right, Tawana, uh, tell us a little bit about you. I'm Tawana Greathouse and I'm with Excel Title Group and it is Fee Attorney's Office for Payne Dutra. And um, I, uh, my dad was a constr in construction and building my whole life. And so I had always been around it. In 1999, I put in a company of my own called Unique Interiors by Tawana. And so I was staging and being in new builds all the time and doing different things like that. And then in 2003, I got into the title business and found my true love. And I was there for several years and then went into uh, home warranty for just a little while, for a couple of years, and then went right back into title in 2011. 
And so um, I've been very blessed. I do a lot of farm and ranch. I was raised on a ranch and so, uh, and raised around Parker County, Tarrant County. So I'm very blessed to be in this industry for a long time. Well, thank you again, both for being here. Um, so let's get in. So, you know, everybody's got a story and that's really why I wanted to create the show, The Difference, um, because they're, when you start to study people, and uh, that's one of my hobbies. I, I turned people watching into people studying. Oh, and wow. I really, back in 2008, wanted to figure out why some people make success look so easy and and how some people can, th th like the crash of 2008 and even now with the COVID thing, how some people can, I'm not going to say breeze through this, but seem to be, you know, they don't stop working. They don't curl up in a ball. They just keep grinding. And when they do come out of it, they seem to be sometimes further ahead than when they went into it. So uh, when I was talking to Leah, she was sharing a lot of information about you, both of you. So I want to talk about that. Now. I want you guys or you ladies to share your story um, of what is some things that have impacted your life and your career that has gotten you to the point that you are now. Um, so let, let's let, let's go ahead and open up with that. Uh, which one of you would like to go first? Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, I think the things that have truly impacted my life as, as far as for my career has been that uh, the first influences that I had were my parents. Both my parents were very entrepreneurial. Um, after that, moving in at growing up, then moving past that, my and when I actually got into this industry, or, or into the, the sales side of it to where I had to be licensed, um, my first influences were some very high profile major producers that just took an interest in me. They just liked me. And when I, real, when I realized the gold mine I had sitting in front of me, I just became a sponge. And uh, for the probably about the first three years, I would just, can I go with you? Can I hang out with you? Uh, and and they let me and they let me do it because they liked me and I just felt so so blessed because of that. So I think in in that first three years, that's where I, I truly got skill. Uh, they truly helped me with that. Um, then moving forward, uh, I work. I just worked just worked crazily, just cutting my teeth and learning different things. And then um, on down the road, I had another agent who um, needed some help and she reached out to me and said, listen, I, I have to, I have something I need that has come up and I need some help. Will you help me? And I said, absolutely. What do you need me to do? So um, I, we worked as a kind of as a, as a co-team kind of like that. But during that, she was a little older than me and she was a great mentor because she saw some things in me that I did not really see in myself. And so she highly encouraged me to uh, get involved in my industry and to get involved in uh, the, real, the Realtor Association and do some leadership classes. So when I did I that, it. yeah, so when I did that, I, had, I, I, I will tell you that um, I had no idea what I was doing when I did that. I had no clue when I said yes, and I really had no idea of what I was getting into. And you know what? It was like a bug bit me. And once I, I went through my, uh, my group, we, there were 19 of us. And we, it just happened that that particular leadership class that, that I uh, participated in happened to be that it was the very first time that they had taken uh, several associations and, and had them come in as a group and us all, and we would travel every month, we would travel to a different association to do our class. And let me tell you, I've made friends for life, uh, colleagues forever. I did this in 2000. My, I graduated from that from that TRLP class in 2010, and we are all still connected today. So let and me ask so, you a question, yeah. Lisa, because um, I think it's really important, and I think our listeners are really going to want to to understand this because I believe it. And, and when you said what you said, I mean, it just kind of struck. Um, accord with me because I believe that not enough people take a leadership approach in their industry and there are different levels of leaders, right? Um, you've yes. got, you've got people that have been in the industry for 20 and 30 years, obviously their leadership because of their experience and wisdom is going to be greater than someone that's been in two years 
but a person that's been in two years can be a leader for someone that's just getting in. And I'm not sure that a lot of us take enough responsibility to do, to, to get into a leadership role. So talk, talk to us a little bit, and then I want to go to Tawana, um, but talk to us a little bit about the value of taking on a leadership role. What does that do for your, your brand? What does it do for your industry reputation as well as public, public perception? Um, taking on a leadership role is, uh, it's not just about people knowing who you are. It is about being a team player. And, you know, uh, people have a job. I have a career and I've invested in my career. Uh, and when you're in the real estate industry, let me tell you, this is not an easy business. It, you, you're looking for a job every day. Um, and so you have to, uh, you get up every day looking for a job. So that in the, in the, with those leadership skills, it just, you understand what your, what your goal is and where you're headed at the end of the day. Um, the friends that I have made and the contacts that I have made, there's things that I, I know that would have never have come my way had I not participated in the leadership class and then stepped into my career and said, yes, I will do this and volunteer. And uh, I, I, uh, I guess I'm, I'm trying where I'm, I'm headed with this is that it has truly that has made the difference. That is truly the difference in my career is the leadership skills and the people, uh, those leaders in my industry who have taken an interest, an interest and have actually stepped up and they've made me be better. And I am so grateful and thankful. That's awesome. I really, I really appreciate that, that perspective. Um, Tawana, your turn. Tell us a little bit about <laughs> what has impacted and made the difference in in your life and in your career? Well, I'm kind of like Lisa as far as my parents where my dad was a, in construction and building and um, my mother um, was a Tupperware manager and you'll laugh, but when I was 11 years old, my mother got pregnant with her last child. I'm one of many. And um, my dad said, what are you gonna do with your business? And she said, Tuan is gonna run it. And he went, what? And she said, oh yeah, she's got this, she can do it. So I literally ran her Tupperware business. I went and delivered the Tupperware, did the display, did the uh, all of the show, did the orders, gathered up the money, brought it home. My mother filled it out. When it was time to deliver it, I stacked it up, delivered it, and rebooked the deal, and I was 11 years old. So that started a whole different life for me. My mother wow. and daddy, my mother just thought there was nothing I couldn't do. And so um, when I decided in 1999, I wanted to go in business for myself, my mother said, okay, let's make a plan. What do you need to do? So I have been very blessed that I have come from a family of entrepreneurs and um, just have always been blessed to have parents that believed there was just nothing I couldn't do. So um, I, and I, I truly love my industry. Uh, I love teaching. Uh, I teach a lot of classes. I love putting people together and helping them. I think that's one of the things is the best thing we can do for anyone is to pay forward. And so I try right. every day to pay mm -hmm. forward constantly. Yep. And um Without a doubt. And so the connections I've made uh, through the years have been a blessing. There have been several realtors that have been big influences in my life, not only in my business, but in my personal life that have given me some of the best direction I've ever had. And so, and I'm very connected with um, my area. I started a tour group almost 10 years ago, which is the longest standing tour group. Myself, two other ladies started it and it is going to be almost 10 years that it is state and before that was with the Burleson area tour group. And then I started the Parker County and I'm on the board that. And then also then I started a area Springtown area tour group with myself and another lady and Lisa's on the board for that. And so we've had that going. And um, then I do a lot with the greater Metro West association. I chair the education, uh, the event committee this year and Lisa's with the education committee and that right. Uh, government affairs. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Government affairs. So, uh, we're very blessed to try to constantly give back to our community that's given so much to us. Well, that is uh, that both of you are just very, very impressive. Um, Tawana, you just talked about connections and I've worked with real estate agents now for 20 years. And one of the things as I talked about when I study people, one of the things that I learned 
that was so evident to me in the, in the crash of 2008 were the, the real estate agents and the mortgage people that went into that catastrophe and came out on the other side were the ones that were relational versus mm -hmm. transactional. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about connections, connections don't last unless you're relational. And mm -hmm. so uh, I, I, I bet that if I sat down and really dug deep in what both of you ladies do and, and have done, I'm going to find out that both of you are very, very relational um, because that's what keeps us all going, especially through tough yes. times like now. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I learned in teaching real estate agents and teaching classes over the last 18 years is that there are a lot of, re uh, of really motivated people out there to learn. They go to classes. But the one thing that I did that I started to understand is that learning on its own is not good enough. You've got to implement what you learn. So tell us, tell everybody watching, everybody listening. Um, and anytime, Leah, you want to chime in on this, please, please do, because you are the co-host. So, uh, but tell people what, just one thing that you implemented along your career that you think has, has made a huge impact. I'll start with, I, I teach a class called Managing Your Marketing. And I literally wrote the program from beginning to end. And I take new agents or people that are struggling with their marketing and I help them walk out the door with a game plan in hand when they walk out that is set for no one but them. We go through their personality, what comes easy to them, what doesn't come easy to them to where they customize a game plan. And then we put it in action and then I contact them on a regular basis, see if they're staying on their program. I help them. I mentor them and literally give them step by step for their personality to build their business long term. Wow, that is that is awesome. Um, Lisa, what about you? I have a couple of things that I do uh, that puts me that moves me into to uh, helping me that to keep it going. And that's the first thing I do is I, I prospect every day. Uh, I implement all my tools. I use them daily. I educate all the time. And I always keep in mind that real estate is not a job. It is a career and that I support it and I give back and that uh, it is about taking care of your people and making sure that you maintain those relationships, whether it's your customer or the agents. You need to always uh, have a relationship and always be uh, available and relational. Well, I, I totally agree with that. Um, Leah, do you have any questions for them before I go on to, to my next one? I've got well, a couple just, here that I'm really, really excited to get to, but I want you to get involved too. So for sure. I just wanted to say that, um, you know, I think it's just important to always work with like-minded people. And that's why I like working with Tawana Great House and Lisa Elkins. Um, they just, they get it. Um, I love it that they're so big into the education part, portion of their jobs, um, the relationship portions of their jobs. And, um, you know, they're just, they're strong business ethical women. So, um, I just think that that is just huge. I just wanted to say that because you can tell by listening to them that they care so much about their careers and the communities that they live in. Um, they're just, they're involved with so much where they are. Uh, and Amen. I'm, I'm honored to work with them. So I just wanted to say that before you started on your next questions. To them. Well, I, will, I will say this, that studying people and, and what I love, what I love about this show is I get to hear from so many different people and personalities and careers. And I really do get to learn and start to, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm taking notes as we're going along because there's certain things and you start to see patterns that people have. And it's a reason why that those are the things that make the difference. It's certain patterns of behavior that successful career minded people have. And it's so evident. And I just I wish so many other people would understand that if we just find that person, that role model, that influencer, that person that we can study that will allow us to study. I mean, sometimes 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 people don't know that you're being studied. They're just watching you. They're watching your behavior. Um, so talking about role models and influencers, are there, is there anyone now, uh, any books, any mentors, any coaches, um, that you're working with, um, that may be really helping you grow even more? Um, the mentors that I had at the very beginning, 
are still in business. They are still, um, and they're still top producers, uh, high profile. And uh, I watch them continuously. Um, I, my company, the people, some of the, the, the leaders inside my company are very innovative because uh, our, our company, the company that I'm with, United Country, um, we've been in business since 1925. We've been an innovator wow. in the real estate industry. In fact, um, we are the most, con the, uh, we've been the, 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 cons the longest con contiguous owned brand in the country. And so um, there, there's just a lot of things there. And so I look inside my, my company group because we have, uh, we have some incredible people in, and leaders in our company. And what about you, Tawana? Well, I have several people that are agents that have been agents for many, many years that have been, that are brokers that I have built a relationship with that have been huge mentors and are on a regular basis that I have somebody to go to and say, in this situation, this is how I handle it. Can you give me some better feedback? Is there a, something I could have done differently to handle things better? Or did I do it the right way? Because I truly try to look at everybody. In the title business, we're kind of different. It's kind of like mm -hmm. a wheel and we've got all these different spokes. So we've got so many people involved in the transaction that we're dealing with. And we want to treat everyone with respect and treat everyone equally. But you also want to see every side of the wheel. So I try very hard to, have, to go to my mentors and say, in this situation, this is what I did. What do you think? Can you give me some better feedback? Just as I have agents if in this transaction, if they're having a problem, you know, and they'll call me and say, well, I did this and this. What do you think? Well, here, let me give you some ideas of maybe you might, you might want to think of the other side of the fence. They're in this situation. So you might give them some benefit of doubt you know, and get some of your facts together before you make a decision about how you feel about this, because there are a lot of people involved in this. And a lot of times mm -hmm. my vendors have taught me that, and I've been able to pay that forward and teach my other agents that. That's great advice. Um, let me ask this before I go on to uh, the final question here, and then we get into our final segment. Um, when you're picking a mentor, when you're picking someone to learn from, are there any specific things that you were looking for when you did it or that over time maybe has revealed itself to you as a type of, of, of maybe characteristic or, or behaviors that a mentor would have that you would look for? Obviously, you both have picked career minded people. You know, there's so many people that get into the real mm -hmm. estate industry and don't last three, four five years. Right. Um, yes. When you're picking somebody that's been in business 20, 25 years, you pick the right person. Obviously, if they're not career minded, I think that's going to it's risky. I, I would I would assume it would be risky to pick someone that is not career minded. Are there any things that you can think of that really was what you were looking for in a person when you decided to pick the mentors you picked? For me, I listened to the way that they spoke to uh, to people, how they would address the people, the new people coming in that and how much and how willing they were uh, how, how willing they were uh, they were to share to share what they knew their their experiences and uh, and to really give you a, a leg up on uh, uh, systems and tools and watch out for this and um, evaluate that that those were the things that I looked for was how open were they how how willing how receptive were they really to uh, to share with me, and uh, and and if the content that they were willing to share really had value. Okay, Tawana, what about you? Well, I I really looked at women that were strong, uh, and men too. I have some some mentors that are men that I I just adore, uh, but I, a lot of the women that I the three mentors that I have they are very strong women. They've been in this career for many many years, and I looked at how they treated others. I, I would look for somebody who had respect and ethics and were kind and were Christian like minded as far as, you know, good morals and, and trying to help others. And those were the that were some of the attractions I had was that, um, you know, in this industry, this is not for sissies. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest with you. This <laughs> is not, a tough no, it's not. industry. No, it's not. And so, 
you know, you when you open yourself up to someone and you tell them how you feel and what's going on with you and you're asking for them to mentor you, you're opening yourself up to be very, you know, to be open and be honest or they're not going to be able to help you. So in return, they have to be open and honest with you. And so finding someone that you can trust with your emotions and your feelings and 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 being honest with them and saying, you know, I don't think I handled this real well or I think I did really well in this area. What are your feedback? What do you think? You mm -hmm. know, that that you it, in both sides of the relationship, it literally has to be a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's well, a absolutely. good fight for sure. I Would agree. You... Go ahead, Leah. No, I was just saying, I agree with that. Like totally what Tawana's saying and what Lisa said too. Um, a mentor should absolutely enlighten you. They should drive you and they should care about you. And if you have all of those bases hit, I think that you can learn and grow so much from a mentor that can do that for you. So absolutely. I agree with them 100%. I do too. And, and, and everything they're saying just fits so much with the different shows we've had. We have one, uh, one of my great friends, uh, Brian Dobbs, um, yes. Leah knows him. And uh, we talk about core values a lot. And if you don't have that synchronicity of your core values, then you're going to struggle, whether it's a client, whether it's uh, a mentor or, or business partner or anything like that. And so it just seems like that both of you ladies found those people that shared that core value system. Um, and that, that I mean, that's going to help your, your relationship last even longer. Um, before we got one thing left before the, the final segment. If I were to ask you to give your opinion on, on something that can make the difference and turn a real estate agent, turn their career from an acceptable career, because I think there's so many out there that that they accept the, 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 the income that they make, they accept the way everything's going, but they really would love for it to be exceptional um, or whether a business thrives or whether it survives. What would be your word of advice to anyone that's looking to reach that next level? Go ahead. <laughs> commitment. I, I'll make it easy. Commitment. I, when I, somebody talks to me about wanting to build their business and, and I tell them, okay, how committed are you? How mm -hmm. much are you willing to truly put of yourself, mm -hmm. not just your time, but yourself into this career? Because it is a career. It's not a job. It is a lifestyle. It is a career. How much are you willing to put into it? If you're willing to put your everything into it, I will handhold you through the whole process. I will help you open doors for you and I will help you build your business, but you've got to be committed. So I ask them, I want you to think about this. I want you to take 24 hours and I want you to really think about how committed you are. And then let's sit, let's sit down tomorrow and let's talk about what the next step is for you. Mm -hmm. good, good advice. Good advice. Mm -hmm. Lisa, what about you? Um, for me, it would be... Uh, Reevaluate the tools. If you're if you're struggling and you you've been in a little short time, uh, reevaluate your tools. Figure out what works for you. Take a look at that. Implement, re implement, reassess, mm -hmm. implement them, and then get committed. Know what your why is and get committed and just press in and keep going because it's numbers. And if you just keep on going, you'll hit. It'll start hitting for you. Mm -hmm. Be dedicated. Be dedicated. You got to dress up and show up. Yes, you do. Every day. There you go. Get up, dress up, show up. <laughs> that's a, that's awesome. Um, Today it's from the waist I, down, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's funny. Um, Lee, I really I can't thank you enough for bringing these two wonderful professional people on. Um, I've been around the real estate game for a long time. I was in mortgage. Then did 18 years of credit repair. Mm -hmm. I've never been a real estate agent, but I have worked closely with hundreds. And yeah. I always am so disappointed when people don't take this career seriously as I think the career deserves to be taken. Because I just think that, that for me, even way before I got into mortgage and credit repair, um, there was two things I wanted to do in, in my life. One is be a professional football player. The other one was being a realtor. I ended up being a, a loan officer. I don't know how that worked out that way. Um, but I just always respected the realtor and the real estate industry. And it breaks my heart to see some of the discount things happening. I mean, just I feel like that there is, there's been an effort 
by outside forces to devalue the real estate industry. And I don't like that. And when I when I sit and I speak to to women and men that that have that commitment, not only to themselves and, and to their business, but to the industry itself. I mean, it, it just really it excites me. It really does. So we're going to get into the last five minutes now. And this is the part that I really enjoy because I get to hear some really good, good thoughts. But I want to talk to um, you, Leah. I want to talk to Lisa and Tawana. And I want you guys to share a little bit about y'all's relationship together, because we did talk about being relational versus transactional. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I always bring in, and I, I think is important. Um, and I want to end the show with that as far as tell us a little bit about your relationship, how you've worked together, why that's important and where the value is. Would you like me to go first? I would like for you to go first. Okay. Well, I'll just start off by saying um, I have worked with Tawana for so many years. I first started off working with her at First American Corporation. Um, that was for me back in, I started there in 06. And I think I was working with you, Tawana, back, was it 2011, 2010? Something like that. Close, yeah, somewhere around there. Somewhere close, yeah. About, two, about two, 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 2009, yeah. Yeah, 2009. Sorry, see, I, I can't add anymore. Mm -hmm. And then I had the opportunity to work with her again in title. And I have to tell you, I'm like I said earlier, I'm real big on working with like-minded people, um, especially working with strong business women, because sometimes we get taken the wrong way. And mm -hmm. it's not that we're being too strong. We're just very much um, dedicated to our careers. And um, some might say it's emotional. I say it's the love for the life that we have. Um, I, I can't say it any other way. I love what I do. Um, I love working with strong women like these ladies. But um, I just, Tawana, when I think of anybody that needs to, and this is the biggest reason why I wanted to come on The Difference today, Lyndon, um, anybody over on the east side of the Metroplex, if you have a customer that needs to go to the west side of the Metroplex and that is not your sphere of area, I say a thousand times over to refer it to someone who knows the area. To want a great house has been a title over there for a long time. Now she looks like she's 18 years old, but she <laughs> has a yeah. lot of background in it. Um, there's so much that can go into closing a home on um, the west side when it comes to farm and ranch. Um, I also wanted to say while I love working with Lisa Elkins, to want to introduce me to her, she too is a fantastic businesswoman. Um, they have just both changed my life in so many ways. I also want to say that um, she is so dedicated to her clients. So if realtors are out there and they are wanting to, um, I said it wrong earlier, if, if they want to work with Tawana and they want to close with a title company on the east side and you're showing something out, Tarrant County, Johnson County, Wise County, close it with a local title company. I said that wrong earlier, so excuse me. So getting back to Lisa Elkins, if you are a realtor on the east side, I highly recommend that you refer it over to a realtor on the west side that knows that sphere. Um, I've had my Texas license for 20 years. I just buy and sell for myself um, or close family members. Um, but I don't know the West Side. I don't know anything that goes on over there. I know the realtors because I go over there and I call them for home warranty. But if I was a realtor, it's not just always selling brick and mortar. So I think you should pick up the phone and call someone Lisa. She is a producing manager. She does have a team of realtors in her office. Um, that if, you know, if you don't uh, want to specifically just give it with her, she has all kinds of people that work underneath her. Um, and they've got a huge company. And like she said, they're international as well. So um, that speaks volumes. So I just wanted to say that about those ladies. Thank well, awesome. You. Thank you. Awesome. That's yeah. that's really, that's a really <laughs> strong statement. And uh, oh. so Lisa and Tawana, tell me a little bit about what you love about Leah. I've known Leah now for maybe about a year. I think we met about a year ago. Um, seems like longer now that we've been all homebound for so long. But uh, tell tell us, tell everybody listening, what is so great about Leah Christ and working with her? Well, I'll start. Like she said, we met 
many years ago in California and then got to know each other better when she was in the title business. But I will tell you that I have followed her at every time, at every home warranty, the both of it she's been with. But the main thing is what you have to understand is even if the company is really good and I'm not bashing anybody, but a lot of it has to do with the rep, how they right. will get involved with the, If there's a problem that you can call them, they'll call you back. They'll do what they're supposed to do. They'll mm -hmm. at least check into it and say, okay, this is what I can do. Let me check and see what I can do to make things better and follow up, do what they're supposed to do. Not everybody does that. And I don't mean that in an unkind way, but Leah takes care of business. If there's a problem and you call her and say, they told me this or whatever, is, is this correct? And she'll say, yes, that is correct. That's all we can do. Or no, that's not all we can do. So let me, let me make a few phone calls and I'll get back with you. And because I was a rep for a while, I do have an idea of what can be done and what can't be done. And she makes all the difference in, in the process, whatever it is. She's going to go to absolutely give everything she's got to make it work and do the right thing. And that's what it comes down to is doing the right thing the first time. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. Thank absolutely. You. I use Lisa? it myself. <laughs> I, I love working with Leah because um, being out in the rural areas for home warranties, we have, um, we have, there's, we, there's, they don't like to come out here or we don't have contractors that will, the, the contractors that sign up with some of them not bashing anybody or any of that, it's just, they think we're too far out. So they don't, they don't want to come out here to work to, to do the repairs. Uh, mm -hmm. Working with Leah, we get to call our own guy. We mm -hmm. love that because right. I have my AC guy that I absolutely love. And I get to call him and say, hey, come fix my my air conditioner. And then we pick up the phone and call Leah and she just handles it. <laughs> and we like that <laughs> because we don't have, here's the deal. We're not broke down in triple digit weather on mm -hmm. a holiday weekend, sitting here about to die because nobody's going to come work for us. Right. Because we can't get a service call out. Absolutely. Absolutely. The other thing I love about it is the fact that we, we really in our in our area we really do try to keep our business local local as mm -hmm. much as possible mm -hmm. and so the fact is that we can use our own people that we know that we can trust to come in our home that we are supporting our local businesses just like we want them great to support point. us and it's a two-way yes. street yes mm -hmm. great point great mm -hmm. point you definitely um, get to pay it forward and keep it in the community and keep those dollars rolling where you guys are so we're glad we can do that for you in home warranty especially, land now. Especially now with especially now with COVID. Those yeah, local exactly. people. Absolutely. We have to because stick now, yeah. And abs they, you know, and they remember that, oh yeah, you, you we, you know, we're the local y'all used mm -hmm. us. Y'all didn't go off somewhere else. And so and they remember that. And it's it's mm -hmm. not short they don't have short memory, you know. So right. that's a good thing. Well, that's part of being relational is taking care of the people over and over again um, that you have brought into your circle or they brought you into theirs. Um, I want to give uh, each one of you just a last word or thought. Um, and before I do, I want to uh, basically the three notes that I took today that I feel like and, and sometimes this gets repetitive. I hope people don't don't mind. But I think that it's a good reminder if people hear a lot of the things twice or, or even more. But the three things that I took from this today that really make the difference are being relational, having a great mentor, and mm -hmm. being career-minded. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to give you ladies the three last word or, or last word for the three ladies, and then I'm going to close us out. And, and before I do, I, I do thank um, Lisa, you, and Tawana. Thank you so much for being here. It's great meeting you. I, wanna, I hope we can have you back on the show again um, because, as I said, I learn so much every time I hear people talk. Um, and it just gives validity to so many of the things that I've studied and I've seen over the years. And these things keep me focused. They really do. I mean, I leave a lot of times. I'm like, wow, I really dropped the ball on maybe a certain thing. And uh, it, just a reminder that those are the things that make the difference. So let's uh, let's start with Leah. Leah, give me a final thought or last word. And then we'll go to Juana and Lisa. I just always say to everybody, because my God rest his soul, my dad, Paul David Frey, to always say, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything that you want. So that's always my words of wisdom. Um, 
my team across the United States, a huge word of wisdom that we've been passing along to our uh, real estate friends in our uh, areas of expertise is um, don't just think about market share and trying to get all the business. Think about mind share. If you've got mind share, then when COVID and all this is done and we're 100% back into our lives like we used to before, you will automatically have market share because you kept up with those people. You cared about those people. You don't necessarily just have to sell them something. Just talk right. to them, ask them how they're doing, how they're feeling. Um, I think people like to talk and they like to be heard. So my biggest advice would be to listen. Absolutely. All right, Tawana. Well, I totally agree with Lynn. It's so funny. My mother and daddy would always tell me, you can do anything you want to if you want to bad enough. It may take you longer. You may have to work harder at it, but it, you can have anything in this life you want. And if you know something about my history, I've changed my life a lot over the years. And um, I totally agree with her. You know, it's all in how bad you want it. You just have to decide how bad you want it and make a plan and stick to it and treat others like you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. True. True. Lisa? If you do right and work hard, you'll always prosper and you'll always have business. They'll always come back to you if you treat everybody right. Wow. Service is key. That's so true. Mm -hmm. So true. Absolutely. Well, well, thank you again, uh, everybody, for being on. Uh, I have one last question. Which one of you is from Arkansas? I was raised, I went to school in Arkansas and my parents on a ranch there. Oh, really? I was raised in a little town called Odin, Arkansas. Odin. You know what? I haven't heard of Odin, but Have I grew you ever up heard of in Pine Camden. Ridge? Okay. I do know where that is. I grew okay, up in Camden, it's right, Arkansas. It's just a couple of miles right outside of Pine Ridge, Arkansas. My parents own 200 acres. I, we are still own 200 acres and I went to school in Odin, Arkansas. Wow. Well, go hogs. Yeah. So. Go hogs. <laughs> My husband, Ivan married an Arky. He's for, he was born in Queen, Arkansas. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, so can that. I get in on this too? Even though sure I'm you native, can. Okay. Even though I'm a native Texan, my husband's last name is Elkins and Elkins, Arkansas was named after his family. Well, wow. <laughs> the so hog has risen. I'm starting, to, I'm starting to wonder, I'm starting to wonder how many Texans there would be if it wasn't for Arkansans. Because yeah. there's a lot of us down here. So, well, all right. Well, Texas I'm going to close. I here until I was 13 and then we moved to Arkansas. So, Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here. Thank uh, you. I'm going to going to go ahead and start closing this out now. Um, final thought. I want to thank everybody for being a part of the show. Um, and I also want to remind our listeners that you can not only watch us on Facebook and YouTube, but that you can also hear us uh, on Anchor, on uh, iTunes, on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, and uh, so you can. Uh, start and follow us there. We're going to be doing some giveaways coming up pretty soon for our followers, for people that comment and for people that share. We've got some really, really exciting things that we're going to be giving away. And so uh, we're going to be looking to that uh, for uh, for who we give those things to. And so in, in closing, I just want to leave you with the same thought I leave you with every week. Um, the difference can most often be found in our habits and behaviors that lead to the choices we make and the paths that we take and the discipline needed to stay the course until the person that we are today becomes a person that we really always wanted to be. And that the place we are today becomes a place that we've always wanted to be. And so until next time, don't give up, don't give out, don't give in, because most often than not, the difference is you. <laughs>